trained hard all the time. And I don't ever remember not being hurt for a fight. You know, I mean, there's different levels of being really hurt or not hurt, but you always had something you were, I mean, the thought of pulling out really wasn't in there. You know what I mean? I mean, you were always kind of hurt. You know what I mean? I think it was a different mentality, a different era. And like, you didn't take four months between fights and make sure everything's perfect. You would just fight a lot off very often. It seemed like, and you just fought hurt. I just think that was more of the thing. Do you disagree with that? I, I do. I think, you know, fighting was almost part of training, you know, especially early on, you know, you, you wouldn't even really get up for a fight separate from training. You'd train right. You know, you might train on Friday and then go fight Saturday until you get to a certain <laughs> point in your career. Yeah. And then you sort of have that habit. You know, you, you're you so used to fighting through injuries. And, and like you said, you're never really 100. And I think that's probably any sport, you know, any contact sport. I mean, I'm sure football players, you can see them out there with casts, you know, playing in the yeah. NFL days. So I, I don't think it's unique, but I, I was never – I was never high flutin about oh, oh, so, so the, which take. So there's two things that I'm taking away from this. One, Miguel, we make a big deal about 50 fight club members. Like we really do. Like it's it's something special that we like honor and cherish. And you don't see other podcasts doing it because they're not even thinking that way. But at the end of the day, you just watch two 50 fight club members just go, well, yeah, dude, you just got to fight. It's like, it's your job. You got to go to work, right? You go to work and you only pay your bills. But it's just it's more of like an honor thing. Like you commit to a fight, you got to do it no matter how banged up you are, because you're going to be hurt anyway. However, in this fight, you know, injuries aside, and I remember talking to you about that. You're like, yeah, my hand goes numb. And, you know, I'm like, well, Keith, you know, it's a telltale sign of a heart attack or a pinched nerve, <laughs> probably a pinched nerve, dude. You know, maybe go a chiropractor or whatever. And you're like, eh, I'll just keep working out with it. But, <laughs> work it, work through it. Yeah, I'm just going to work it out. But in that fight, the surprising thing to me was you knocked him out and Derek Noble, who in my opinion probably had some of the heaviest hands in the region, wasn't able to accomplish that fact. And it was also Musil's last fight that he had ever fought. Like whatever transpired that night, he, he didn't want any more of it. Like he, he, <laughs> his, his fight career was over and he's a Russian red devil. Is that your second Russian red devil that you had fought at that time? Yes, it was. It was my. I, I ended up fighting three guys from the Red Devil team, but that was my second. We're there. If I'm not mistaken, I think Musayil passed away. Um, oh, really? I'm not, really? not like right after that, but maybe ten years later, I think he got murdered, like a political wow. murder. And he was in. He was from. I don't want to say Russia, but like a satellite state, and I can't remember. I couldn't tell you offhand, but I remember yeah, it made the was all Kazakhstan or or, or Ooh, something. No, yeah, it was Dagestan. Yeah. I think that is it. I think he was from maybe Dagestan. If, if there I'm you go. So, wow. so, so yeah, the uh, Keith, you, you, you talked about the Shoney Carter fight 